know I'm talking about. Technical analysis. Now, no matter where I go, actually sitting in the hospital, people were asking me, well, what do you do? Oh, I'm a financial analyst. I teach financial education. What they asked me, should I buy Monday.com? Should I sell the S&P? What should I do with the economies going bad? Well, wouldn't it be nice if we had all of those answers? But trading isn't about looking at a crystal ball. There isn't one. There is no perfect answer. There's no simple solution. But technical analysis can help you improve your trading strategy and help give you high probability trades while at the same time lowering your risk. So keep in mind the term technical analysis is a complicated sounding name for a very basic approach to investing. If we take the term technical analysis and kind of toss it out the window and replace it with the word chart analysis, because basically technical analysis is anything and everything we do on a chart, especially in CFD trading. There's very little we do off charts or very little other kinds of indicators that aren't related to charts. Everything we're looking at is related directly to the price on charts. Now, the roots of modern technical analysis comes from Dow theory, which hasn't been around, around that long. It was developed by, in 1900 by Charles Dow. It is the backbone for stock investing. And it was the first time that people realized that prices go up or go down, and you could trade them in either direction. Now, Charles Dow's contribution to modern-day techn technical analysis cannot be underestimated. His focus on the basis of security price movements give rise to a completely new method of analyzing the markets. Now, if any of you have a couple hours in the evening or an hour each day, okay, reading and learning and understanding Dow theory and learning about Charles Dow is really kind of an eye-opener. It's amazing how the markets function before him and after him. And now, Charles Dow did not ever put together all of his theories. He wrote all the basic theories, but he never put them together in a systematic approach. It wasn't done until years later by one of his comp com compadres. But the price of a security represents a consensus. Regardless of whether gold is trading at 1450 or 1700 and 1900, very few of these securities we're talking about has an actual price that's come up from something. You know, if you want to say a car is, you know, a new car is selling for $19,999, you could probably break down the price of the car by the cost of the car, the cost of the tires, the cost of the shipping, and break it down and come up where that car how that cost of the car came about. You know, you know what the profit level is and everything else. Securities just simply represent a consensus between a buyer and a seller. Okay. For instance, when Tesla first put their cars on the market, you know, when they were sight unseen, I mean, people were bidding up and driving crazy prices in the car, and nobody had any idea what the value of the car is, what it was sustained. This is just what somebody was willing to pay. Now, these simple statements are a cause of a major challenge in forecasting prices because they refer to the human expectation. And if you keep in mind, the markets are all controlled by human beings. So whether you find a bot, whether you find a scanner, whether you find an AI or an algorithmic trading system, they can not incorporate all of these human beings out there that are making decisions. How many people and how are they reacting to Donald Trump's indictment? How are they reacting to Berlusconi's death? You know, all of this has some implication on the market. So the human element cannot be ignored. So technical analysis is only a set of tools that we use to incorporate our own human elements. Because humans are involved I am sure that most, much of the world's investment decisions are based on irrelevant data.
Now, the future can be found in the past. This is one of the most important statements you can make about technical analysis. If you understand how an asset, whether it's a stock, whether it's Forex, whether it's cryptocurrency, how it is traded at that price levels in the past, you can help predict how it's going to trade when it reaches those price levels in the future. So if prices are based on an investor's expectations, then knowing what a security should sell for becomes less important than knowing what other investors expect it to sell for. That's not to say that not knowing what a security should sell for isn't important. It is. But there's usually a strong consensus of a stock's future earnings that the average investor cannot disprove. Now, to give you an example, I think maybe three years ago now, time does go by fast. Walmart was releasing its earnings. It was the quarter after first quarter of the year is after Christmas sales. And they did okay, but just okay. They reached expectations. But not enough that it should have interested any in investor because any investor was already uh, into the stock before that. Then they announced some closings. Of, of, uh, they released same store earnings. It was disappointing. They released some closings from some stores. It was disappointing. They released, they released their internet figures. It was better than expected. They listed their number of new users on the internet. Much better than expected. But it was a number that was buried in a report. Not intentionally, it's just where it came. An hour later, the price of Walmart shares went through the roof. Why? Because this consensus of all these people out there taking the time to read these numbers, they got excited about the growth in their online sales and the growth of new visitors to their website, as opposed to the drop in online, you know, in same store sales. So this was a, per, a personal reaction. This wasn't a set of numbers and their ROI changed. Nothing changed in their report. But when you analyze it, this is how human beings responded. Now, technical analysis is based almost entirely on the analysis of price and volume. The field which defined a securities price and volume, we're going to explain. Volume is a key issue to understanding what an asset is doing, especially for our type of short-term trading, because volume confirms what the market overall thinks of an asset at the time. So no matter how much analysis you've done, no matter how much research you've done, no matter how much history you've done, if volume doesn't support your decision to buy or sell or sit on the sidelines, you shouldn't be jumping in the market. The last set of your rules on trading strategies should be, does volume confirm my decision? Now, let's talk about volume real quickly. Because volume is very important to technical analysis. We know the volume traded in a stock. Because all stocks are traded on the major stock exchanges. And we know to the minute, to the hour, how many shares have actually traded hands, changed hands. On the commodities market, in most cases, we know within a very short period of time exactly how many commodities or options contracts have changed hands because both of those are going through major exchanges also. But when it comes to Forex, when it comes to cryptocurrency, and when it comes to CFD trading, we don't know what the volume is. Forex does not go through any exchange whatsoever. There is no record of volume in Forex. There's no record of volume except some hypothetically made up stuff for cryptocurrency. And there is no record of volume for CFDs. So the volume you would see on a chart for a CFD trade 
and say Alphabet would be different than the volume if you went to the New York Stock Exchange to see how many shares of Alphabet traded. The reason being is CFDs do not go through an exchange either. Now, CFDs go through what we call pool providers or, mar or market makers. It has come down to an understanding that the largest market makers, when they report the volume of how many contracts in the euro, US dollar, or the, the Bitcoin or whatever, has gone through their pool, that this is what is being reported. This number usually bounces out to the same range of actual contracts or shares. Okay. Because when all the CFD traders start trading the euro, US dollar, they start trading Bitcoin and the volume jumps up, we'll see that jump in volume. That jump in volume does honestly represent but only represents what that major pool provider can see. Okay. Since all the brokers use major pool providers, what the little pool providers don't are doing doesn't matter. So what you're doing is you're not co counting copies of contract, you're seeing a jump in volume or a drop in volume. So, but it's very important to know the difference. Now, the other thing we wanna look at, at before or after volume, I, I, I'm what they call a price action trader. I only trade from lines on my charts. I don't use technical indicators. I use support and resistance levels, chart patterns, and volume. That's it for me. Okay. Now, technical analysis or chart analysis involves looking at patterns in price history to determine the higher probability time and place to enter and exit a trade. Now, there's all kinds of ones people come up with all the time. Flying saucers, cup and handles. The basics are things like double bottoms, double tops, triangles. Okay. These have all been around a long time. Let me see if I can pop up a chart for you here. I think I have one ready. Okay, so as you can see on your screen, we have head and shoulders, we have reverse head and shoulders, double tops, double bottoms, triple tops, triple bottoms, falling wedges, rising wedges, flags, pennants, and consolidation. But to easier say them, we have bull flags and bull pennants. We have wedges. For me, I use the most reliable. I find that I define most of them as triangle patterns, just like you learned in school. Two lines traveling on angles meeting at an apex with a base. But chart patterns have been around for a very, very, very long time. And they are one of the best tools that you could incorporate in your trading to trade, especially CFDs. So like you see here, here's a, a current chart and you can see the triangle formations on the chart. Triangle formations help you make trading decisions. Here on my Euro US dollar chart, this is my teaching chart, all these lines going across are my lines of support and resistance. Chart patterns, support and resistance, and trend lines are the basis of technical analysis and should always be incorporated into no matter anything that you're doing and anything you're looking at. Okay. And these things, like my lines of support and resistance, aren't drawn on there on a daily basis. Therefore, whenever the euro US dollar was trading at this level last time, and they're just extended forward. Eventually, when you have them all on your chart, they're there forever. So your US dollar climbs to 110, 120, 125, all the lines from before come into place. But they help you let you know the story of the movement of this asset. Think of it as an elevator. Think of it as the steps on the ladder. As the, the price moves up and down through this price, these are the steps on that ladder or on that journey that was important to that asset at the last time you were climbing that ladder. So keep in mind the word technical analysis, I keep saying, is a bit of a misnomer since it's really not that technical. A better name for the use of charts to make investment decisions or, and do risk reward and psychology would be chart analysis. 
Now, in this field of technical analysis, we come to what we call oscillators and indicators. These are mathematical formulas that are applied and put either on the chart above your price or over top of your price or below. But all of them are based to help you understand what price, because that's the ultimate thing, is trying to tell you. Because remember, all of these indicators and oscillators out there, whether we're talking MACD, whether we're talking RSI, stochastics, no matter what you're talking, only have a few pieces of information that make them different. They can all only use the open, the high, the low, and the close, and volume. It's just the mathematical formula, the statistical formula that they use to calculate whatever they're going to give you, and then how they tell you to read what the results are. So simply stated, technical analysis is the study of data generated from the market and from the actions of people in the market. Such data includes price levels that have served as turning points in the past, the amount of a stock or volume being bought or sold each day, and the rate of change of movements. Now, this is one of the most important indicators you can get. Rate of change of movements or momentum. It tells you how much strength or energy is in the current move of that market, whether it's up or down. Because if you think of the markets, can only do three things. Price can only go sideways or in congestion, which is what it does most of the time. It can go in an uptrend or it can go in a downtrend. So what are you trying to do? You are trying to do several things. You're trying to find high probability trades. You're trying to reduce your risk component. And you're trying to find an entry point and an exit point. Those are the only decisions you want you need to make. So understanding the strength in the marketplace or the strength of the price movement is critically important. Now, if you think that the market can only do three things, and basically an uptrend is a mirror of a downtrend, and it spends most of the time sideways. If you understand what is driving that price up, not what happened in the marketplace, not what did Bill Gates say or what, did, what did, uh, happened to Tesla, but if you understand what is driving that price on the charts, okay, because when price is moving up or price is moving down, they are giving you hints and clues because price is generally random. There are certain times price generates non-random behavior, and these are known as trends. These trend when we have a trend happening. The cleaner the trend, the more defined the trend, the more reliable the trade you make. Now, when you stop to think that in most cases, there's billions of buyers all over the world, sellers all over the world. We, the retail trader like you and myself, we're the little nobodies out here. We're making a couple thousand dollar trade here, a couple thousand dollar trade here. We're not pushing the billion dollar trade button and then go on out for lunch. But when you think for some reason, this buyer, this guy, we don't know who he is. We don't know where he's from. We don't know why he's doing it. He works for some big banking institute, some investment. Effort. He decided he's going to buy the euro today. So he doesn't need any leverage. He dumps a billion dollars in the market and buys the euro. But he doesn't blindly buy the euro. And he doesn't set it up on a hit or miss. He buys that euro, he sets up his stop loss, he sets up his entry exit point. Everything is predefined. So one of his compadres say, oh, look at that. We see a jump, a tiny little snicker of a jump in the euro. Oh, I'm going to jump in the euro. Another guy jumps in the euro. Well, finally, 
people like you and I start seeing this move into Europe, but we're, it's still very early. But what happens is there's momentum generating and there's force and energy. As that euro goes up, it's going to start climbing up very, very slightly, very tiny incremental steps. But more and more buyers are starting to jump off the sidelines and jump into the euro. At some point, and we don't know what that is, is that price is going to get a little bit too high for more people to jump in. And it also has reached that exit point that at that initial buyer had already pre-set up early this morning to take his profit. So what happens is the market calms down for a second. It cools down for a second. As that price eases down a little bit and those sell orders are filtered out, those buyers who went to the sidelines start re-entering the market and pushing the market back up. So how do you know this? How do you see this? How do you understand this? You can understand it and analyze it through the use of technical analysis. Now, somebody just wrote in to me, and I'm going to stop and answer this one really quick. Something about imbalances in the marketplace. Believe me, you and I will never, ever find an imbalance in the marketplace. Don't spend your time, your effort trying to locate them. This is an old idea from 20 and 30 years ago when the markets used to trade very slowly and one market would be over here and one market would be over there. It's just like just 10 years ago, people were doing cryptocurrency arbitrage because the exchanges in Korea change their prices less frequently than the changes in Japan. And you could actually buy on one exchange and sell almost immediately back on the next exchange. Can't do that much anymore. Okay. Everything is super fast. There are no imbalances in the market anymore that you and I will ever see. Don't set it up in your trading. Don't think about it. Don't waste your time. So remember, what the only thing that we can see is the open, the high, the low, and the close. So how do we use and what type of technical indicators do we use? Remember, a technical indicator is to alert, predict, and confirm. A technical indicator does not give you a trading decision. It gives you, it's a tool that gives you pieces of information. Now. Remember, your chart tells you the story. And technical indicators are the interpreter of your charts. But that's all that they are is an interpreter. They try to translate what a chart is telling you in simple to understand words. Now, if you think about it, think about a UN interpreter. Okay. So hypothetically, and I'll probably get this long, but a guy from Belgium is getting up on the, the podium to make a speech. He's going to make a speech in French. But it's the French they speak over, or, you know, because they speak, what do they speak? They're Flemish and French, I think it is. But he's going to make a speech in French. Now, I'm a Frenchman and the representative of Canada, and I grew up in French-speaking Quebec. But my French is slightly different. Although my friend, I'll understand every word he says. I won't understand the nuances. So I put my headset on to listen to a professional interpreter who will then help me understand the nuances of everything this guy is saying because that professional interpreter understands his French and my French and will give it to me in my French so that I get every tiny in and out of what this guy is saying and all of his indicators occasions. This is what a technical indicator does. A technical indicator offers a different perspective from which to analyze the price action. Some, such as moving averages, are derived from simple formulas, and the mechanics are relatively easy to understand. Otherwise, such as stochastics have complex formulas and require more study to fully understand and appreciate. They don't really have it's not that their formula is complex. 
the value that it gives you after the formula is calculated doesn't have a fine definitive answer. Very few indicators say, okay, at 99 do this, at 497 do that, and 322 give you that. So regardless of the complexity of the formula, technical indicators can provide a unique perspective, a strength and direction of the underlying action. Now, technical indicators are based on mathematical equations that produce a value that is then plotted on your chart. For example, a moving average calculates the average price of security in the past and plots a point on your chart. As your chart moves forward, the moving average plots new points based on the updated price information. Ultimately, the moving average gives you a smooth indication of which direction the asset is moving. But you have to keep in mind there are two major classifications of technical indicators. They're leading and lagging. Now, please don't apply like what a school, what you would apply if your teacher, if a teacher called you and told you your kid was leading the class or lagging behind the class. Leading and lagging in technical indicators is not a good or a bad thing. A leading indicator helps give you a signal about what might be happening in the market. A lagging indicator confirms something that has happened in the market. You know, if a trend is ending, a lagging or if a trend has just ended and you haven't even noticed it yet, a lagging indicator will tell you it's over. A leading indicator might tell you your trend is about to end, but there are very few leading indicators that we can rely on because they're kind of trying to predict the future. So leading indicators lead the marketplace. Lagging indicators lag are a confirmation tool. So now we can break these down into categories. Because it's important to know what category your indicator falls in so you're not using redundancy. So the most important or the leading indicators you should look at are trend indicators. Trend indicators measure the direction and strength of a market using some form of price averaging to establish a baseline. Trend indicators tell you which direction the market is moving and if there is a trend at all. They're sometimes called oscillators because they tend to move between high and low values. These include things like parabolic SAR and uh, moving average convergence and divergence. Then we have my favorite group, momentum indicators. Momentum indicators help identify the speed of price movement by comparing price over time. It can be also used to analyze volume. It is calculated by comparing the current closing price to previous closing prices. Typically, this appears as a line below the price chart that oscillates as momentum changes. So remember I was telling you about that momentum building up as a trend builds up? A momentum indicator will help you see that start or the lack of that growth in that trend movement. So volume indicators also show us the shift in volume over time. And then we have volatility indicators. Volatility indicators measure the rate of price movement regardless of the direction. This is generally based on the change in the highest and the lowest historical prices that provide useful information about the change of buying and selling that take place in a given market. Volatility indicators tell you how much the price is changing in any given period. Now, a volatility indicator can replace actually reading volume. And if you want to know that volume is moving in the right direction, looking at volatility might help you. Low volatility indicates small price movements, but high volatility indicates big price movements. High volatility also suggests that there are some price efficiencies in the market and traders spell inefficiency. We'll cover one volatility market today, and or we'll talk about my favorite, which is Bollinger Bands. Then we have volume indicators, okay, which measure the strength trend and confirm the 
direction based on some sort of averaging and smoothing of the raw volume. These technical indicators measure the strength of a trend based on volume of, as I explained, shares traded, CFDs traded, or contracts changed. Now, four important tips you should keep in mind. Covering more than five indicators is futile, it's a waste of your time. Focus on two or three indicators and learn their intricacies in and out. And always find indicators from different fields. Using three volume indicators is just wasting your time. Using two momentum indicators and one volatility is a waste of your time. Don't use overlapping indicators. Never choose indicators that generate the same signal. Always choose indicators that complement each other. Confirm your strategy by using an additional indicator or indicators to substantiate a trend suggested by one indicator. And that's why I always say, confirm any decision you're making or any strategy building by using looking at volume. Because volume is an indicator. Learn what indicators are and why you should choose which indicators from which fields and that support each other. To find the best technical indicators for your approach to trading, test out a bunch of them singularly and then in combination. There is no formula. There's no indicator that works best for the euro and no indicator that works best for a cryptocurrency. There's no group of them. And anybody wants to tell you, you use Bollinger Bands, this one and this one, Neil, you have the perfect group for interpreting Bitcoin, is full of it. Because a lot of it is left into your own personal interpretation. Find the ones you feel comfortable with and then learn and become the master of each of those indicators and then practice them together so that you can see how they work, when they don't work, and how to interpret from them. So regardless of whether you're trading stocks, Forex, or futures, it's often best to keep it simple when it comes to technical indicators. You may find you prefer looking at only a pair of indicators to suggest entry points and exit points. At most, only use one from each category of indicators to avoid unnecessary distracting and repetition. Technical indicators are mathematical calculations based on a trading instrument's past and current price and volume. Technical analysis that uses information to evaluate historical prices and predict future prices. Indicators do not specifically provide any buy or sell signals. And this is something you need to look at also. You have to determine what you want from these indicators. Do you want an indicator that helps give you buy and sell signals? Or do you want them ones to help predict target prices and exit prices? Do you want them just to give you buy and sell alerts? If I'm going to use an indicator, I only use it as a confirmation tool. You have to decide what you want from your indicators or your analysis. A trader must interpret the signals to determine trade entry and exit points that confirm that conform to his or, his or her own trading style. Several different types of indicators exist, including those that interpret trend, momentum, volatility, and volume. Now, this is a big word, and it's an important word, multicolonarity. Multicolonarity is a statistical term, has nothing to do with finance. That refers to the multiple counting of the same information. It's like listening to Donald Trump trying to count count all the polls and all the votes were stolen from them. They use the same information and recount them over and over and over and reinterpret them different, a zillion different ways to apply them to find out there's no difference. This is a common problem in technical analysis that occurs when the same type of indicators are applied to one chart. The results create redundant signals that can be misleading. Some traders intentionally apply multiple indicators of the same type in the hopes of finding confirmation for an expected price move. In reality, however, multicolonarity can make other variables appear less important and make it more difficult to accurately evaluate the markets. So avoid redundancy. Now, my word of advice to everybody is find one indicator, just one. Whether I started out years ago with MACD because I like saying moving average convergence divergence. I thought the name was cool. 
And that was the first one I ever worked with. I learned it, I mastered it. And once you apply to your charts, find another one you think work would work well with their complement and learn that ending. Learn them separately. Don't learn them together. Master them separately and then put them together and see what you can see in those results and see if they work together well. And if you can see possible trading opportunities or trading information, what you can glean from those indicators. But to avoid the problems associated with multicolonarity, traders should select indicators that work well with each other or complement each other without providing redundant results. This can be achieved by applying different types of indicators to a chart. A trader can use one momentum and one trend indicator. For example, a stochastic, a stochastic oscillator, an ADI or ADX indicator could be used. Knowing what indicators to use and what is best, the best combination of technical indicators can dramatically improve your chart reading skills. If you use the wrong technical indicators, this can lead to inaccurate price interpretation and sequentially to bad trading decisions. So look for groups that work together and which work complement each and take one from each group. So look at your lagging and looking at your, your leading. And look, if you want indicators to generate buy and sell signals, they're great. You know, MACD only gives you buy and sell signals. It doesn't give you an entry point or an exit point. It doesn't give you where to set your risk management or how to set risk management or what your target is. It only gives you buy and sell alerts. But that's all I want from my, my tools. I use other pieces of information to decide whether I want to exit or exit a marketplace. But keep in mind, indicators only indicate so a strategy is a set of objective absolute rules defining when a trader will act typically strategies include both trade filters and triggers so understanding technical analysis which is the study of historical price action in order to identify patterns and determine probability of future movements in the market using technical studies indicators and other tools Technical analysis boils down to two things, identifying trends and identifying support and resistance areas on your charts. Markets can only move in three ways, up, down, or sideways. So if you keep that in mind, you'll be one step ahead. So technical analysis of a market can help you determine not only when or where to enter a market, but much more importantly, when or where to get out of a market. Technical analysis is based on the theory that the markets are chaotic. No one knows for sure what will happen next. But the same, at the same time, price action is not completely random. In other words, mathematical chaos theory proves that within a states of chaos, there are identifiable patterns that tend to repeat themselves. This type of chaotic behavior is observed in nature in the form of weather forecasts. For example, most traders will admit that there are no certain ways to pre predicting exact price movements. As a result, successful trading is not about being right or wrong. It's about determining probabilities, finding high probability trades and minimizing your risk at all times. Always trade based on risk reward ratios. And remember, there is no magic formula. There's no magical indicator. The secret to success in trading is good risk management, discipline, and the ability to control your emotions. Anyone can guess right and win occasionally, but without risk management, it's virtually important to remain profitable over time. So I hope very much you learned something tonight. I hope we had a good conversation. I hope my hand didn't affect anybody's visual acuity. And thank you very much for being a part of the Alvexo family. Good night now.